When it comes to printing white ink, there are really four major contributing factors. The first is the screen. You really want to have a tight tension, a mesh tension on the screen in order to lay down the ink on top of the shirt versus if you're using a low mesh tension screen that had a lot of flex in it, you would allow that mesh as it's printed to sit on the shirt and more smash the ink into the shirt. So a tight mesh tension screen is important. The second is your emulsion stencil thickness. Now, the amount of ink that goes on your garment is directly oriented to how thick your stencil is. So if you're using a one-in-one -one coating method with a thin stencil, you're only going to lay a thin amount of ink down. During the printing process, it's physically impossible to lay down more ink than the thickness of your stencil when you're just passing one stroke across the screen. So what you want to do is you want to make your stencil thicker. You do this by coating one and one letting the screen dry, coating the outside of the screen one more time on the outside with the thick edge of the scoop coater, letting it dry again, and then coating it one or two more times depending on the stencil thickness that you want. The third is going to be the squeegee pressure and angle, and we're going to show you that later as we start printing. And the fourth is going to be the type of ink that you're using. You want to use uh, opaque ink, but you don't want to use a real robust ink that's hard to work with. You want to use an ink that's going to be creamy, soft, and easy, easy to use without having to reduce it, which then cuts down your opacity. So first, let's talk about mesh tension. We have a 110 mesh screen. Now, when you're doing a white plate, you typically want to use a lower mesh, like a 110 mesh, 156 mesh if you want some detail, and maybe even an 86 mesh if you have just a block image. So this is a 110 mesh screen. That's what we're going to be using today. And we're going to measure our newtons. That's the tension of the screen. Now, the newtons of your mesh on a good screen is going to be want like at least 22 uh, to 24, optimally maybe 25 to 28. Uh, 20 will work. But if you're down in the teens, you're going to have problems with the opacity. Now, it's still going to print fine, but let me give you an example. We were at a trade show. The first trade show print that we set up is actually going to be the image that we're doing today. The first show was in, uh, I think it was Fort Worth. The print looked beautifully. It was, I did two passes, one hard stroke, one more angle stroke, and it came out extremely opaque without even having to flash it. We also stick, uh, thickened our stencil up, as we'll show later. Two shows later, did the same thing using the same screen, the same stencil thickness, and the same ink, and we were not getting a, an opaque enough print to not flash it and then having to print it again. That was directly due to the mesh tension. Over the course of two months sitting in a hot trade show crate in a warehouse, that mesh really relaxed, and we went from uh, 23 newtons all the way down to 14, and that's where we lost the quality of that image without having to flash. So this screen right here, this is a newton meter, we're going to measure it, and this is looking at about 24, 25 newtons depending on the side of it. It's going to be very tight and optimal for printing. Next we'll talk about the coating. When you're coating your screens, typically you're going to coat it once on the uh, outside and then once on the inside, and you always want to let the emulsion rest on the outside of your screen. That's why you coat the outside first, then the inside second, which pushes the emulsion to the outside of the mesh. You also want to always let it dry in the down position. Now to build your stencil, you can't coat the screen all at once. You have to do it in steps because if you coat it all at once with emulsion, the emulsion is going to drip off and fall down and you're going to have a mess. So what we're going to do is coat it one in one, which this screen's already coated. Then we're going to coat it another time on the outside and then we're going to let it dry again and then also coat it a third time on the outside. And when we do these multiple coats, there's two sides to this scoop coater. It's the thin side or the sharp side and there's the round side. We're going to be using the sharp side to do the one-on-one -on -one coating method, and we're going to be using the round side to do the additional coating methods to build up that stencil thickness. If you're setting up on an automatic press for a long run, you probably want to do a two and two, and then a two and three for your thicker stencil, which we'll discuss later with multiple screen printing on an automatic versus the manual, where we'll just be using one screen. So with this screen, we've already coated it one and one, let it dry. Then we coat it another time on the outside using the round side of the scoop coater. And this is going to be a third coat on the outside using the round side of the scoop coater. I didn't put a lot of emulsion in the scoop coater, so I'm just going to let the emulsion slide to the screen surface. And when I'm doing these multiple coats on the outside of the screen, I'm not going to press hard. I'm going to uh, release some of my pressure because I want the emulsion to more sit on top of it versus pressing into it like I would on a one in one coating method. So once we got emulsion contact on the mesh right there. 
We'll do a fairly quick stroke. And our goal for this, we don't, I'm not going to do the whole screen, but our goal is going to be thickness. So I really want to lay a lot on. I'm going to do a second one right now to kind of even everything out. And we can see right here, we're fairly even coat right throughout the screen right there. And now we'll put it back on the drying rack to dry. Once our emulsion is cured and ready to expose, then it is time to line the artwork up and then go ahead and expose it. Keep in mind, because you are coating the screen three or four times thicker than you typically coat it, it's going to take longer to dry. You want to make sure that your emulsion is completely cured before you go to expose it, otherwise it won't wash out properly. If your emulsion is still wet on the inside layers of the emulsion, it will peel off and instead of the image holding, everything will wash out, which is not what you want, obviously. So to test that, you can take your finger, lick it, um, and your emulsion should feel uh, like plastic. It shouldn't be slimy at all. Once we have uh, ensured that our screen's cured, we'll then come over to our registration table and line up the artwork. This is simple design. We're using 110 mesh screens. This design is a little complicated, but should come out very good on a 110. Let's use some double-sided tape here. Line the artwork up. We have center crop marks, so using a registration table makes it really fast and easy to line up. Screen's lined up, ready to go. We'll take it over to our expersion unit. Now, when you come to exposure, just like drying the screen, because you're using a thicker coat of emulsion, it's also going to be a lot longer to expose the screen. So you want to probably, if you're coating a three coat method on the back, you probably want to take your exposure time and what you're normally used to doing it, bump it up by 25 or 30 percent to make sure that the UV rays penetrate all the way through the back of the exposure um, emulsion. The way you can tell that is during washout, if the emulsion feels slimy at all on the back, that means the back side is not getting exposed. So the next time you do that, you want to increase your exposure time. This screen right here, we're going to expose for about six minutes. Once the vacuum sucked all the way down, our screen's ready to expose. Right now it's actually exposing, and once again we're exposing this screen for about six minutes. This is a dual cure DXP emulsion. Once our exposure process is done, we'll take the film off the screen, and then we'll wash the screen out. Get the screen wet on both sides as usual, but you do want to let it soak for a little bit longer. The emulsion is a lot thicker on these, so they're going to be a little bit harder to wash out. Ryan, Brad Lehman from Printed calling. I uh, just wanted to uh, say kudos to you for selling me the spot process uh, program. We are very, very satisfied with the qualities of what we are doing out here. And to be able to get into the Las Vegas market and have this at our availability is just kind of the wow factor. Uh, I've been working with you guys for a little over five years. And today I can tell you I am a screen printer. Thanks, Ryan. You really want to see your image fully developed on the screen before you go to wash out. You don't want to see drips coming through the screen. So we'll let it sit for about a minute or two, and then we'll come back with pressure and wash it out. Now let's hit it with pressure. When your screen's washed out, you should definitely notice the stencil thickness in the emulsion. 
Also, you want to let the screen dry, blot with the newspaper on the inside to prevent any diazo from ripping, um, dripping back down into the screen. And then also post harden it for about the same amount of time as you exposed it after you actually let the screen dry. So post harden it would be either putting it on the sun or putting it on your exposure unit. Once our screen has been exposed, been washed out, dried, and then post hardened, let's take a closer look so you can actually see how thick the stencil is on this emulsion. Now we're ready to print. First, let's take a look at the ink. We're using the Rionet white ink. A lot of times white ink is extremely thick and hard to print with because of the opacity needed to show up well on a dark garment. Rionet white is especially made for Rionet Corporation by International Coatings, and it's a blend of certain inks that they make that we've made specially formulated for our company. It's very creamy, very easy to work with, but still you have awesome, great opacity. So you can see even on this screen how creamy this ink is and how easy it is to work with versus a lot of other whites on the market, but still you don't lose any of that opacity by reducing down one of those other whites to make it this creamy. Now, before we print, let's talk a little bit about the squeegee. We're going to be using an ergonomic squeegee and then the print process. We're going to do this print without flashing, so we're going to do two passes. The first pass is going to be a fairly hard angle with the squeegee, uh, probably at 80 degrees and a lot of force, pressure to get the uh, fibers of the shirt encapsulated and give a base for our second pass, which we're going to angle the squeegee more and more uh, set the ink on top of the shirt versus trying to force it in it. Let's pull the shirt up. Sure, our palette has good adhesive on it. Right before we print, we also want to check for off contact. Obviously, you do want off contact probably about an eighth of an inch when printing white. So we'll set the screen in the print position. We'll check our off contact there. And now let's print. So first pass is going to be straight up and down good amount of pressure to encapsulate the fibers. We want to make sure that we've cleared all the ink on the back of our screen. Now, let's flood it to load the ink back up in the well. And with the second pass, we're going to come back with a more angled squeegee stroke, a little bit softer. Marvin once told me it's kind of like putting peanut butter on bread. I think it's a good analogy. You don't want to smash peanut butter into bread, you want to kind of lay it on top of it but you still want to take the ink off the back. So it's, this might take a little bit of practice, but maybe even angle it a little bit as you see that I'm doing right here. So now let's take a look at our result. This is only two passes without a flash. Yes. See, we have a very bright white with no flash. First stroke, hard to encapsulate the fibers, the second stroke to get our opacity. Typically this could be done in three to two to three flashes, but now we just tripled your production time. Once we're done printing, now let's touch on curing. We're curing this shirt in a conveyor dryer. Whether you're curing with a conveyor dryer or a flash, you want to ensure a couple things with white. White's always going to be thicker than your other colors. Also, using infrared heat, white is going to reflect the heat back away from the ink rather than absorbing it, let's say like black. Black's always going to be absorbing ink, white's always going to be reflecting it away. So you have to change your curing parameters a little bit. If you don't have a laser temp gun, we'd really recommend getting one because this allows you to point, whether you're underneath a flash dryer, like over here, or running through a conveyor dryer, allows you to point the laser temp on the surface of the ink and know that it's reaching the temperature that the ink is needed, which is actually 320, 330 degrees. So the surface of the ink needs to be 330 degrees, but you have to let that settle for a good, um, probably five seconds at least to allow that 330 degrees to travel to the bottom. There's also a stretch test that we'll show you after we take the shirt out of the conveyor dryer. So as it's coming out, let's temp it. And we're seeing that this ink right here is at 330 degrees, 332 degrees. So we should be cured, we should be ready to go. You can actually smell plastisol also after it's cured. It has kind of a pungent odor to it. Now we'll talk about the stretch test. 
The stretch test Plastisol, especially when you have a thicker coat of Plastisol like white onto the garment, it should stretch. It should not crack. So if we tug on it just slightly, it should stretch with the shirt and it should not crack. As you can see right here, we're fine. It's stretching and we're good to go. Now, depending on the mesh you use, the ink could have a different feel. So if you do want a softer hand, there's some soft hand additives that we have. You can add into the ink or you can use a little higher mesh. You can also put it underneath the heat press using a Teflon sheet for about five seconds. That'll really soften out the ink and give it a much shinier sheen versus sometimes a little bit more rougher sheen. One other thing I wanted to touch on is we did this print manually. This is a manual press, manual squeegee, obviously, so you can actually physically control the angle of the squeegee and how hard you press. So the first one we're doing pretty hard, uh, straight up an angle, and the second one we're uh, changing the angle, obviously, to get the opacity built up on the ink. With an automatic press, you can't have that functionality because the squeegee pressure and angle is set on each head. So with an automatic press, what you can do is you can actually use two different screens. One with a more up and down angle, then you can flash it, then a couple stations later, to allow that screen, uh, the ink to cool down, you can use another screen with a little bit thicker stencil and a more angled stroke, maybe a little bit more softer stroke too, like we saw in our manual machine. So you can accomplish both, either with automatic printing or manual printing. We're pretty much done now. Thanks for watching the video on Printing White. We hope this has taught you guys some stuff and also will help increase your production times, cut down those three or four times you're having to flash white right now.